Hello my third graders! Today we're going to be doing a lesson on vocabulary. Our objective of the day is that the student will be able to use context to clarify meaning of words that are unfamiliar to them. We will be doing that by learning how to use context and context clues um, to broaden our vocabulary. Does anybody know what a context clue is? Right, a context clue is going to be a cue in the story that is going to help us figure out the meaning of the word that we do not know. We will be doing this by a whole group lesson where we will all be sitting on this carpet and we will be reading a story called The Word Collector. The Word Collector is by Peter H. Reynolds. It's going to be a book of a ton of words that are unfamiliar and we are going to use context clues in order to determine what those words mean. So what we are going to go ahead and do first is I'm going to plug in my computer onto this smart board and we are going to listen to a woman read the word collector for us. So let me go ahead and pull that up. All right. All righty, friends. you like to collect? Well, something I like to collect are book character plushies. <laughs> well, today we're going to read a book about Jerome and he collects something very different. Let's find out what it is as we read The Word Collector. That's a big hint, isn't it? <laughs> if you have a copy, go get it so you can read along with me. The Word Collector by Peter Hamilton Reynolds. Collectors collect things. Some people collect stamps. Some people collect coins. Others collect rocks. Some collect art. Some collect bugs. Others collect baseball cards. Some people collect comic books. And Jerome, what did he collect? Jerome collected words, wonder. He collected words he heard. My trip to Peru was perfectly pleasant. Certain words caught his attention, Peru. He collected words he saw. Certain words jumped out at him, willow. He collected words he read. Certain words popped off the page. Emerald. Short and sweet words. Spark. Bloom. Drift. Dream. Two-syllable treats. Treasure. Motif. Whisper. Candid. Hover. Glimmer. And multi-syllable words that sounded like little songs. Geometry, guacamole, kaleidoscope, wonderful, symphony. There were words he did not know the meaning of at first, but they were marvelous to say. Aromatic, vociferous, effervescent. There were words whose sounds were perfectly suited to their meaning. Molasses, Tyrannosaurus Rex, Torrential, Smudge, Bellow. Jerome filled his scrapbooks with more and more of his favorite words. Jerome's collections grew. He began organizing them. Dreamy. Science, sad, action, poetic. One day while transporting them, Jerome slipped and his words went flying. As he began to pick them up, he noticed his collections had become jumbled. Big words next to little words, sad words next to dreamy words. 
Jerome began stringing words together. Whisper, symphony, electric, peace. Words he had not imagined being side by side. Savor, dreams, cascading, stars. He used his words to write poems. He used his poems to make songs. They moved. They delighted. Some of his simplest words were his most powerful. I understand. I'm sorry. Thank you. You matter. Jerome eagerly collected more and more of his favorite words. The more words he knew, the more clearly he could share with the world what he was thinking, feeling, and dreaming. One breezy afternoon, Jerome climbed the highest hill, pulling a wagon packed with his word collection. He smiled as he emptied his collection of words into the wind. He saw children in the valley below, scurrying about, collecting words from the breeze. Jerome had no words to describe how happy that made him. Reach for your own words. Tell the world who you are and how you will make it better. Peter Hamilton Reynolds. Words are something that everyone can collect. Like Jerome discovered, the more words you know, the more clearly you can share your ideas with the world. I hope you enjoyed our story today. See you next time. Now, my friends, I would like you guys to help me read these, board, read these words off of the board. Our first word, collect. Perfect, collect. Pleasant, pleasant marvelous marvelous that's a big one bellow bellow and jumbled jumbled we are going to go ahead and go over these words and see if we can use context clues from these words in our story to see if we can find the meaning of them all right let's look at collect collect i'm going to give you the example in this story Jerome was a word collector. What do we see Jerome doing in the story? Perfect. We think that collect means to bring or to gather. Jerome was a gatherer of words. He gathered a bunch of words or he brought, or brought a bunch of words. Our next word is going to be pleasant. Pleasant, does anybody think they know what pleasant means? Pleasant was used when Jerome described, or when the man described his trip to Peru. Um, he said that it was perfectly pleasant. Let's see if we can use the words in this sentence. The guy was excited in the story. He looked happy. So it was perfectly pleasant. What does the word perfectly mean? Right, right, right. No flaws, nothing wrong with it. So perfectly pleasant. So what do we think that pleasant means? Perfect, I'm gonna show you this meaning. It means very good or appealing. Appealing means something that makes you happy, something that is good for you. So very good or appealing, that's gonna be pleasant. Next we've got marvelous. So Jerome in the story, he said these um, were words that he did not know what they meant at first, but they were marvelous to say. So he did not know what the meaning of them was at the beginning, but they were marvelous to say. If you were thinking of Jerome in the story, what do you think that he thinks of new words? So what would be another, another word that could mean marvelous?
Alrighty, here comes the meaning. Great or amazing. He thought that they were marvelous to say. He thought that they were great to say or that they were amazing to say. All right, here comes the next one, bellow. This was next to a picture of the lion in the story. The lion was kind of doing a, ah, so he was kind of doing, what do lions do? Perfect, let's see. Oh, you are correct, they roar. So a bellow for a lion is kind of like a roar. He was bellowing, he was roaring. All right, next one, let's see, you guys are doing good jumbled all right this was at the end of the story when um jerome had lost all of his words or they fell they were all over the floor so they were all jumbled he was disappointed because he had them all organized so they were jumbled in the, the um book we saw that they were all scattered across the floor they were jumbled what do we think that jumbled means mixed up or untidy. What is untidy? Untidy is not clean. So they were mixed up or they were not cleaned up. They were not put like he had them before they went on the floor. So they were jumbled on the floor. Alrighty, here we go. Eagerly, eagerly. So eagerly was used when Jerome eagerly collected more and more of his favorite words. So this is at the end of the story. Jerome was happy. He had a smile on his face. He was excited to collect more words. What does eagerly mean? I kind of just gave it away, but excited or enthusiastic. Enthusiastic means ready to go, excited, hooray, we're collecting new words. So we could see in the story that he was eager to do it. He was excited. He was on edge. He was ready. He was pumped up. He was stoked. He was you know, eager to do more. You can be eager to, I don't know, get off the school bus and go home. Or you can be eager to come to school because you like school so much. You're excited. Alrighty. So what we're going to do now is we are going to try some examples. I am going to give you a sentence or context clues for these words coming up and I want you guys to try and tell me what they mean based off of how I am saying them. So it's kind of like a Pictionary for words. So our first one is immaculate. Let's do Miss Tipton came home today to her kitchen being immaculate. If you know me, you want to know how I like my classroom. So how would you think that I like my kitchen? Immaculate. Perfect. All right. So some people think that I like my kitchen messy. Some people think that I like my kitchen immaculate. Immaculate is going to be gorgeous, flawless, beautiful, immaculate, spotless is another word. There was no mess. It was immaculate. I like my kitchen how I like my classroom. I like it clean. I like it tidy. I like when people pick up after themselves. Immaculate. All right, the next one is ravishing. When, let's see when Alyssa walked into the dance, her dress was, or she looked ravishing. Her dress was beautiful, ravishing. What do you guys think that ravishing means? perfect. It was beautiful. She looked amazing. She was ravishing. She was wowing everyone. Ravishing. You can look ravishing. Like I said, when Alyssa went to the dance, she was ravishing. She was beautiful. Everybody around her was speechless because she was so pretty. All right, let's work on this next one. Ingenious. Ingenious. In school, Parker was ingenious when it came to the subject of math. 
in school he was ingenious. What do we think ingenious means? Perfect, yes. Parker was smart. He was ingenious. He was smart. He did very well. Good. Alrighty, last one we're gonna do today is infatuated. What do we think that infatuated means? Infatuated, it's not what you think. There's a middle, middle here, that's not what you think, infatuated. Okay, I'm gonna give you my example. Miss Tipton is infatuated with her fiance. She is infatuated with her fiance. She goes and she smiles and she has hard eyes and she blushes. What do we think that infatuated means? Perfect, infatuated means that she's in love. She wants to spend time with him. She is infatuated. She's, like I said, she's got hard eyes. She really cares about him. She wants the best for him. She's infatuated with him. So we learned four new words, immaculate, which is like perfect. You can be immaculate when you go, like your vacation can be immaculate. If you've ever been to a really cool spot that's immaculate, it could be your vacation was immaculate. It was amazing. It was perfect. Ravishing. It's like beautiful or breathtaking. She was ravishing at the party. Ingenious. This one is smart. Inventive is very good. Very good. It's very ingenious. Very good and then infatuated, hard eyes. She's got love, she's infatuated. She wants to, I don't even know, keep on seeing him. She wants, she's infatuated. You can be infatuated with sport. If you really like soccer, you could be infatuated with soccer. You wanna spend a lot of your time playing soccer because you enjoy it. You, you're infatuated with the sport of soccer. Perfect, let me go ahead and um, Plug this. Oh, perfect, perfect. Alrighty, so let's review our um, objective of the day. Our objective, once again, was the student will be able to use context to clarify the meaning of words that are unfamiliar to them. So we will use context, using context clues. You guys were able to use context clues to solve words just by me saying sentences. What this will do for your vocabulary is it will broaden your vocabulary. It will actually allow you to be able to find out meanings of words without me having to tell you or without you having to look them up in a dictionary. So we did some practice with the book with Jerome. Jerome was good, gave us good examples of how we can use context clues by looking at pictures in the story or looking at different words or continuing to read the sentence in order to figure out what the word in the story means. So if we come to a point where we do not know what a word in a sentence means, we don't give up. We can broaden our vocabulary by using context clues. If we can't find context clues, our next resort can be a dictionary, but this week, today, we will be working on broadening our vocabulary by using context. Context of the story, the way that they are used in the story. Alrighty, so what we're going to be doing next is I am going to give you guys a, um, a short story. So it's gonna be a little bit shor shorter than the book about Jerome and his um, words that he collected. And this is going to have some more big words that you probably will not know the meaning of. What I would like you to do is figure out the meaning of these words from context clues. So I'm going to give you a sheet of paper um, that has the words in the story 
that I am looking for you to define. What I want you to do is as you read through the story and you come across these words, you're going to define the words and figure out what they mean. So say the word was magnificent or marvelous as Jerome used in the story, marvelous. You are going to go back into the story, find the word marvelous, or you can do this as you're reading it, marvelous, and look at your context clues to figure out the meaning of the word marvelous. Then you're going to write what you think that it means right next to it in the spot provided. I had such a good time with you guys reading The Word Collector and I am excited to help you out with this next short story, which is also another great story. So I would like you guys to go back to your seats and get started on this. If you need my help, I'm going to be at the back table, the back circle table for you guys to come and gather around if you need so. Just let me know. Just raise your hand at your seat and I will come right over and help you out. Alrighty, go figure out the words.